Yo, 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 what is up guys? It's Cohen back here again today with another video. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about this insane Sixers Wizards game that just happened. Um, there were some other interesting games. It was a pretty good day of basketball, but I think this one deserves a video pretty much of its own. I'll hit on some of the other games at the end, but I just wanted to go over how insane this game was. Uh, as usual, I'll start out with saying, uh, drop a like, um, subscribe to become a real one. Um, I'm only at 1.5k right now, so if this blows up, you'll be one of the first real ones that were here. So go ahead and drop a subscribe if you like this type of content, talking about basketball pretty much every single day. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, obviously, the star of the game, Bradley Beal, 60 points career high game for him. 20 of 35 from the field, which is pretty damn efficient. Uh, 7 of 10 from 3, which is insane. He was unstoppable. Um... This is like, I know obviously since it's his career high game, it's obvious when I say this is the best offensive game of his career, but legitimately it was unbelievable. He could not be stopped. Um, step backs, uh, hitting shots in the corner, the wing, the top of the key, floaters, crazy layups, just everything was falling for Bradley Beal in those first three quarters. He was electric. He had 57 through three. He ended up only scoring three in the last quarter. He didn't play around the first half of it. And then by the time he got in, his shot seemed to have just gone cold and the Sixers kind of figured him out. I, I think that maybe getting on the bench threw him a little bit out of his rhythm because that third quarter especially was ridiculous. I believe he had 22 in that quarter because I think he had 35 at half. So he... I think just fell a little, little bit out of that rhythm. The Sixers came out with a better scheme in the fourth quarter to try and stop him. And ultimately, it wasn't enough for him to will the Wizards to a win as they lost by five, 141 to 136. The Wizards just cannot play defense. Even, even if their player scores 60 points and they still lose, it's not a good luck for your team defensively. Russell Westbrook had a pretty good game. He had 20 points, 12 assists, 8 rebounds. He was uh, a team high, actually, in plus minus, I believe. And, well, team high, it was still in the negatives, but the lowest of the negatives. And he shot 8 of 18, not, so not bad, just under 50%. 3 of 6 from 3, actually, which was pretty impressive because I swear I saw him more, miss more threes than that. So he wasn't even, like, doing too poorly uh, Thomas Bryant was fine offensively. Defensively, though, Joel Embiid cooked him every time that they ma matched up. Joel Embiid was hunting for Thomas Bryant all night. He was also very much hunting for Davis Bertans, who uh, it, it felt like he hit more. Davis Bertans' threes feel bigger than they are, I think, because he is just so good at like hitting those insane threes, falling away, falling out of bounds, like deep as hell, like near the logo. So his threes feel bigger than they are because. I didn't realize until now he only he went shot four of twelve from three, which is terrible for taking that many three pointers. He was also he also like I said spent the whole game getting cooked by Joel Embiid. Um, Ish Smith had some really good finishes around the rim for the Wizards. I I love Ish Smith as a backup point guard. I think a lot of teams could use a guy like him. He's been underrated in his career in terms of his consistency at that backup point guard position. So. But it just wasn't enough. The fact that, like I said, Bradley Beal can score 60 points and your team just... Like, they spent most of the game getting blown out. It wasn't until the fourth quarter that this even really looked like a game. Um, maybe a little bit end of the third. I think they brought it to within like a 10-point game around the start of the third quarter. Or the end of the third quarter, excuse me. Start of the fourth. And then they brought they took the lead a couple times actually too. But the Sixers were just too much. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid both hit really clutch shots at the end to seal the game for them. Uh... I'll start with Seth Curry, though, because Seth Curry was unbelievable tonight. He had 28 points. He was a team high in plus minus. 11 of 14 from the field. 6 of 7 from 3. And five, he was 5 for 5, I believe, in the first quarter from 3-point uh, range, which was unbelievable. He had some really timely shots for them. Like It felt like every time that there was some kind of run that the Wizards were going in that fourth quarter, it was just out of nowhere. It was Seth Curry who was just hitting the shot to kind of like stop the bleeding and then Ben Simmons and Joel B would come in and do the rest of the dirty work to finish off the job which gets me into how they played Ben Simmons played great 17 points 12 assists 6 rebounds uh, 7 of 9 shooting I really wish Ben Simmons would take more shots because I feel like he could average a lot more points if he did take more shots but I mean I guess what I understand why they don't because when you've got other guys like they're, they're obviously hot tonight 
with the Sixers shooting unbelievably from three-point range. 62% from three, 18 of 29, 61% from the field for the whole game. They were just unbelievable tonight. They could not miss if they tried. And ultimately, it culminated in a win, mostly in part, though, due to the ridiculous performance of Joel Embiid, who had 38 points, eight rebounds, five assists, three of four from three, 11 of 20 from the field, played 37 minutes. He was unstoppable. He had two insane blocks, uh, one on Bradley Beal in that fourth quarter where Beal just couldn't seem to get anything going, and one on Raul Neto in transition, which I I don't know if I've ever seen Joel Embiid run that fast. I don't know if he was still mad at Raul Neto for playing poorly on the Sixers or something, but he looked like a gazelle the way he was running. He took like these super long strides and just ran from like half court with Neto like bout across the three-point line. It was unbelievable. Amazing block. Really just the Sixers in general. This Sixers team is legitimate. Like this is a really, really good team. And you can tell if you watch the game tonight, they played with much more effort than I had seen them play in the past, like maybe two, probably two, three-ish seasons, Uh, maybe outside of that uh, 2019 season. So maybe just one season, but even actually, even sometimes in that 2019 season, like they underperformed in my opinion, but they just played with so much heart uh, there were times where there was a play where like Russell Westbrook got a steal and then Ben Simmons sprinted down the court to get the steal. Their body language looked so good throughout the game. Even when they were giving up that lead, they looked like, okay, we're calm. We know we've got this. And with this win, they moved to seven and one on the season, the best record in the, in the NBA. And I've been meaning to talk about the Sixers for a little bit now because I, I've been like vocal on Twitter about it at underscore at three underscore cone. I don't even know my own at apparently on Twitter. Go check me out. But I've been vocal, very, very, very vocal on Twitter that this Sixers team is legit, like a threat to win the East if this keeps up. Uh, the big X factor is the fact that they're playing hard and guys like Tobias Harris, who just don't show up sometimes, now they're showing up. Tobias Harris won Eastern Conference Player of the Week last week in a conference and just an NBA overall that's got a lot of guys who are really, really playing well. And he just, he's been amazing for them. This team has been amazing defensively too. Like this was the one game where they just didn't lock up defensively. And I think that was mostly in part to the fact that Bradley Beal was unstoppable tonight. You could have put anyone on him and no one would have stopped him, but they're ama- They're great defensively. They play with a lot of hustle. Seth Curry fits this team really, really well, better than Josh Richardson did. And Danny Green, who fits this team well, especially when he's hitting his threes, like he did tonight. He had five of them. Doc Rivers has impressed me as their coach so far. I've liked the rotations he's had. Dwight Howard has some big minutes for the Sixers. They just, this team just plays hard. Shake Milton is great. Shake Milton's low-key become one of my favorite, like, younger players in the entire NBA. I don't know why I just really like watching him play. He, it feels like he just doesn't miss sometimes, and he just kind of makes the game look easy for a guy his size. Um, He's kind of lankier. He doesn't have, like, that super muscular build. And he's just, I feel like people underestimate how good he is. He's huge for the Sixers team, huge with the bench production. He had 19 tonight, six of nine shooting. I don't think I've ever seen him miss a wide open three. If it's contested, maybe, but wide open, like never. He also had some timely baskets for them tonight. And uh, I, this Sixers team's legit. Last year's Sixers team, sorry, last year's Sixers team would have lost this game. I don't think that is even a question. I think they would have, like, the Wizards would have taken a lead and the Sixers might have just shut down. They would have just given up and like, okay, I guess it's just not our night. Bradley Bill's unbelievable. But this team fighting backs, I think that says a lot for them. People are going to say that they've played a lot of easy teams. Uh, A lot of teams on their schedule have been pretty good. Um, A lot of over 500 teams, like, they beat the Knicks. They lost to the Cavaliers, but that was without Joe Embiid. Their one loss... Um, they beat the Hornets, who are pretty good, but I like I, I I think this team's legit. I don't think that's a question. And in my opinion, right now, Joel Embiid is the MVP leader. He at least through these first eight games. I don't know if that'll stick, but he's played great defense, great offense. He's just the key to this team. And if this keeps up, if the Sixers play as well as they have been, I could see Joel Embiid winning an MVP, which I would love because he's one of my favorite big men to watch in the league and it would definitely make the uh, whole Nikola Jokic Joel Embiid debate a lot more interesting on Twitter but uh, with that that's all I think I wanted to talk about with this game uh, let me know what you guys thought let me know what you guys thought about some of the other games tonight uh, Malcolm Brogdon had a huge game Gordon Hayward had a huge game Thunder beat the Pelicans 
shout out OKC. And I think with that, I'm going to sign off here. So I'll see you guys later.